Hey everyone, welcome to Singularity Beast 2 Build Log Part 11. At last the day has arrived when I can go back to work on this system. I know a lot of people have been waiting for me to complete this build because it's something that I get a lot of comments about. Now recently I made a Build Log Continuation Preview video. I'll put a link on the screen. Now the purpose of this video was to bring people up to speed with this build. I went over all of the specifications to reintroduce the system and I also talked about why I had to stop work on this build. It was because I had a number of client builds to do, client builds 3, 4 and 5 because this is actually my personal primary system. So now that those builds are all finished I am going to complete this system at last. The other thing that I did was I started to take a look at some of the components that had arrived. Now as you can see a lot more of the components have arrived but I'm still waiting on the rest of them. So what I'm going to do is do a quick overview of the parts as they arrive and then I'm going to take a closer and more detailed look as I'm installing them. Okay without any more delay I'm going to jump straight in and get started again on this build log. Now if you feel like you've missed out on some of the details, go back and check out the build log continuation preview video and there is also a massive 10 part build log that you can check out to see how I got the build to where it is now. I need to give a big shout out to The Cool Room, Mayhems and also Case Labs who are sponsoring this build. Make sure you check out their websites, the links are in the video description. Now there's something that I just wanted to mention quickly. I saw in the comments that there was a few people starting to compare Singularity Beast 2 to Nighthawk and also Client Build 4. Now every system that I build is different. I like to make my systems as individual as I can. Nighthawk in particular was all about the aesthetics. It was also about performance but the focus when I was building that system was to build something that looked amazing, that looked different from anything else. Singularity Beast 2 is very different to that. It's a workstation, a practical build which I have built to perform certain functions and everything else falls second to that including aesthetics. That doesn't mean that I won't still create good aesthetics if I can but the priority is functionality. Now just look at the case, it's a perfect example of what I'm talking about. I certainly wouldn't go for a case like this for aesthetics. I chose this case because it fits a massive amount of hardware and water cooling components. It has a massive radiator capacity. It will be easy to upgrade. It does everything that I need it to do. The other thing is we all need to keep in mind my objectives here, the reason that I'm actually making these videos. The only reason I'm making these videos is to share my knowledge, to give you information that you can use to build your own systems. I'm not trying to start a competition or of who can build the best system or anything like that. It's just me sharing information. Okay, so as you can see, I have a lot of Noctua NFF12 sitting here. There's actually 18 of them. The reason I have so many fans is because I have three 480 millimeter radiators in this build, and there is also a lot of case fans, and I'm going to be replacing all of the fans. The reason that I went for Noctua NFF12s is because they're extremely quiet, they're a high performance fan, and one of the things I need from this build is I need it to be silent because I'm sitting next to this build working 12 hours a day or more. I'm recording my voice like I am right now. I'm filming. It's important that it's silent. Now I know nobody likes the color of these fans. I don't like the color either or the aesthetics. This build is a practical build and you're going to see that in almost all of the components. Now these are incredible fans. I'm going to be taking a look at them during the build log when I install them and I'm also going to do a separate video on these fans. So 
make sure you check that out if you want all of the details. Okay, now for a brief overview of the rest of the components. As I mentioned, this is not all of them. I'm still waiting on a few components. Now, I have here a bunch of BitsPower multi-link fittings. These are the ones that combine with BitsPower Crystal Link. You can also see I have BitsPower Crystal Link here. Now, this I actually just got these to stock up. I do have a large collection of BitsPower Crystal Link, and I am going to be using a lot more than this in the build. Okay, so I mentioned these water blocks briefly in the build log continuation preview video and I actually also had a close and detailed look at these water blocks in part 9 of this build log. I'm going to take another good look at them when I'm installing them. Now here I have a whole bunch of ModSmart black 120mm fan grills. So I'm going to be I'm going to install these around the build just to protect the fans. Also to improve the aesthetics. I have some more Silverstone 120mm dust filters here. There's already a lot of them in the build, but I'm going to be adding a few more. Okay, here I have the new EK Supremacy CPU water block. This is the Nickel Plexi version, and I'm going to be replacing my EK Supreme HF with this water block. Now, I'm actually going to do a separate video on this water block, and I'm also going to include results in this build log comparing the EK Supreme HF and the EK Supremacy. Okay, next up I have some G-Lid Quad PWM splitters. So they go from a PWM connector and a Molex connector to four PWM connectors. Now, I might be using a couple of these to connect some of my fans to the PWM fan headers on my motherboard. But I won't talk too much about the configuration that I'm going for yet with my fans because I'm going to wait until all of the components arrive, probably in the next couple of build log videos. Okay, I have some more BitsPower Black Sparkle fittings or components here. I have a multi-F block and also a tap. Now, originally when I built this water cooling loop, I placed quick disconnects so that I could easily disassemble this water cooling system because I knew that I was going to be upgrading and changing this build soon, but I didn't properly design a drainage system. Now, an optimal drainage system obviously needs to be at the lowest point in your build, but not only that, you need to have something to let air in at the top of your build. So that is what I'm going to be setting up and I'm not sure if I'm going to have something at the top to let air in. It might not be possible, but I will definitely have this drainage system with the multi F block and tap at the lowest point in the build. Okay, next up I have some ModSmart red three millimeter LEDs. Now none of these are sleeves, so I'm going to be sleeving all of these. And as I mentioned in the preview video, I'm going to change around a lot of the wiring. I'm not going to connect my lighting to the switch panel at the front of my build anymore. I'm just going to directly connect all of it to the power supply because I don't need to be able to switch my lighting on and off and I really just want to clean up a lot of the wiring in this build. The reason I'm cleaning up the wiring is actually to make room for hard drives, which is something else I'm going to talk about soon. I'm going to be putting a lot more hard drives into this system. Okay, this is an inline temperature sensor, and I talked about this a little bit in the preview video, but I'll give you all the details on this when the rest of the components arrive that I'm going to combine with this temperature sensor. Okay, this is a kit of Corsair individually sleeved black cables for the AX1200. Now I'm currently running two AX1200 power supplies in this build and I'm going to be dropping back to a single power supply. The power supply that I'm actually going to use is the new Corsair AX1200i. And all the red cables that you can see in the build, I'm going to be swapping them all for black cables because I am all about hiding cables and not drawing attention to them. Now. For the people who are wondering why I'm not going to sleeve my cables, I am actually going to sleeve some of the cables in this build 
but it comes down to again this is a practical build it's a workstation aesthetics are not a priority but it's also because since I started my channel I don't have time to do things like sleeving cables anymore I mean I don't even have time to game anymore I can I only game when I make videos but this is what I have chosen I love putting time into my channel sharing my knowledge with everyone is is a passion it when it comes to client builds it's a completely different matter though if I get a client request to sleeve cables then of course I'm going to do it okay moving on to the rest of the lighting that I'm going to use in the build so I have here three bit Phoenix alchemy red LED strips two sixty centimeters and a thirty centimeter now as I said this is a practical build so I wanted to keep things such as lighting which is purely for aesthetics as simple as possible so just a few LEDs and simple LED strips you know it's not going to have a an impact on the wiring I'm going to be able to keep things really clean and out of the way so as I said I will go for good aesthetics if I can still maintain the functionality that I need okay now this is an interesting new product from bits power it's the dual and single D5 top upgrade kit 150. Now 150 actually refers to the size of the included reservoir. So there's a number of different versions of this upgrade kit with different sized reservoirs. Now what this kit actually allows for is for one of BitsPower's reservoirs to be mounted directly to their dual or single D5 pump top. Now you can see in Singularity Beast 2 I'm using the dual D5 pump top and I've done a configuration that I do quite often in my builds. I've mounted a BitsPower 150mm reservoir to the top of the pump top using a fitting. So this upgrade kit will allow me to eliminate this fitting and it will really clean up the aesthetics of this reservoir and pump configuration. Okay, I mentioned in the build log preview video which coolant I was going to be using. So I'm going to either use Mayhem's Pastel Light Red or I'm going to use Mayhem's Pastel Ice White and then dye it to the exact color that I want. So that's all of the components that have arrived so far. Okay, it's now time for the first step in continuing this build. I need to drain the coolant that's in the loop and then I need to flush the loop. So the way I'm going to do this, first of all I obviously need to drain the coolant so I'm going to do that now and I'm then going to fill the loop again with laboratory grade distilled water and I'm going to run the system for 12 to 24 hours and that should pick up you know most of the remaining coolant and anything that's left behind I'll then drain that and I will probably do it again after that so by the time I've done it a second time the loop should be almost spotless there might be some staining left behind but I'm not worried about staining because I'm going to be running similarly colored coolant okay so as you can see I've started to drain the water cooling loop so I've connected up the opposite side of a quick disconnect and a piece of tubing to the lower quick disconnect around the front of the build. That will drain this side of the water cooling loop. I then need to drain the other side of the water cooling loop from the quick disconnect that I have around the back of the build. Okay, so I'm now draining the other side of the loop. Now any coolant that you can see on the towels that I'm using is actually from the quick disconnects. It's just the way that they are designed. They spill a small amount of coolant when you undo them. Sometimes if you get a really good quick disconnect it won't spill anything but most of the time you get at least a few drops. Now I actually had to remove both of the hard drive bays to get access to the quick disconnect and tubing around the back of the build but it only actually took me about five minutes to empty almost all of the coolant from the loop. Okay, now I'm filling up the loop again with laboratory grade distilled water. And as you can see, the remaining coolant is quite diluted, but as time goes on, it picks up more and more of the color of the remaining coolant. And it actually ends up being almost exactly the same color as it was before. So because of this, I'm definitely going to go through this process again. 
Now, because I'm only running distilled water in the loop for a maximum of 24 hours, it is safe. Any longer than this though, and it will start to potentially damage your water cooling loop. Now, I'm going to talk more about this in the next video. I'm going to talk about the most common things that people use for coolant and also some of the mistakes that people make when it comes to coolant. Now, it seems to be a controversial subject. I get a lot of comments on it. There seems to be a fair bit of confusion about it, so I think it's an important topic for me to cover. Anyway, that is about it for this video. This is only the very beginning. In the next video, I am really going to get started on this build. I'm going to start stripping all of the hardware out of the case, cleaning all of the components, you know, dust cleaning, and also flushing out the components individually with distilled water. There is just so much work to do on this build, even before I can start assembling it again. So I'm really looking forward to getting stuck into it. That sums up this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like, and favorite if you want to see more.